I got guns in my head and they won't go. Spirits in my head and they won't go. I got guns in my head and they won't go. Spirits in my head and they won't. I've been looking at the stars tonight. The year is 1920. World War One has ended two years ago, and things seem to be fine. Well, maybe not for this person called Thomas, because he got locked in an asylum. I'm talking about Utsukushi World, or in translation from Japanese, Beautiful World. I don't exactly know why it's in Japanese, since Japan in the 1920s looked like this, and not like this. I mean. It could be set in Japan, but from what I've seen, it doesn't seem like it. So I'm guessing it's just to sound cool. So Utsukushi World was made by Taka, a lovely friend who I think you should subscribe to. But why am I making a video on this series, and what for? Well, dear viewer, it's because I can. Okay, but in all seriousness, it's because I want to. I want to share this with other people. Don't worry though, this video isn't just a whole promotion video. No, no, I'm going to be explaining the story, giving some feedback, and maybe even some theories. Let's start first with the story. The introduction. Thomas gets tricked by a person called Tyler, thinking he'd be in a hotel, but instead he gets locked up in an insane asylum. Tyler, Francis, and another person have donuts while Thomas is still locked up with this thing. After three months, Thomas escapes the asylum with magic boxes appearing out of nowhere, helping him. Thomas gives Edward a call to pick him up and give him clothes. Thomas eats turkey, then needs to go to the hospital. Tyler and Thomas go to the hospital and meet Tate, who is bed stuck because of unknown reasons. Tyler is sad because Tate only has four months left to live, apparently, and whoever this is doesn't like Tate for some reason. That's the basics of the story at the time of making this video. So now we're going to move on to the feedback and review section. First and foremost, I obviously enjoy and like this series, especially Thomas. The strong points I would say are the characters and their personalities. That's one of the main reasons why I enjoy this and Thomas. Obviously, there are a few holes here and there, like how did Tom get insane? Why is Tate in the hospital? And what are this guy's motives? So there are a few plot holes right now, and I hope they get answered sometime in the future. I don't know how important this scene is, but it also would have been interesting to see the effects of being in an asylum for three months. Because firstly, Tom's time in there felt extremely short, especially when it's emphasized for how long he's been in there. And secondly, when he leaves, it's like he was never in one. Another critique I have is some of the dialogue. This is a little nitpicky, but I'm fairly sure that no one in the 1920s said LMAO and OMG continuing from the nitpicks. Sometimes it can be a little hard to understand what the character is saying. This thing They are glad you are gone. They only support Tyler because his brother was ill. So if it had subtitles, I think that small change could make things a lot easier to understand. Another small problem with some of the dialogue is that it tells the viewer rather than shows. He doesn't just have four months, he has an infinite amount to live. You know how stories go, you should show rather than tell. But how would he show trauma or insanity rather than tell? Well, let me tell you a good way of thinking about it. I'm not too good at explaining this, so I'm going to show a little snippet of another YouTuber called Screened, who couldn't have said it better. I want you to listen to something. 
the sound of fireworks. Let's take away the lights for now. The sound seems pretty normal and familiar, but after hearing it for a while, the sporadic bursts and crackling combustions begin to form an invisible nuisance. What if I asked you to listen to this for an hour, a day, or a week? Everywhere you went to, and even when you had to go to sleep, forced to even find it in your dreams, it would become unbearable and exhausting. How would you be able to go about your day? Your normal tasks and interactions would be greatly affected. It's as if you're living in a disorienting reality apart from everyone else, always on edge, at the mercy of the next destabilizing pop, hoping for a moment of silence. If you want to watch more, I highly suggest you watch it with the card above. Now, these flaws don't make it a bad series, as I keep saying, I enjoyed it. And Thomas. What? Who's there? Hello, this is the simp police. We've come to arrest you. What? A simp? Me? I'm not a simp. Yeah, well, what's that behind you? Nothing. Come with me. You're going to simp jail. Wait, no, please, man, come on. It's not my fault, okay? He's just a cool dude and I really like him. Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. These flaws don't make it a bad series, because then I wouldn't be making a video if I didn't enjoy it. That's where we move on to suggestions and theories. I just want to say that this is my interpretation of what's happening, and there's a very big chance that what I say isn't true, and I'm going to be changing things up a little. So this is how I see things. The year is 1920. Some people are still suffering from World War I, like Thomas, who has PTSD from being a soldier. Tyler, who wants Thomas to get proper treatment, tricks him into an asylum. Thomas doesn't want treatment because he doesn't want to be treated differently. He's left in there for three months, which makes his condition worse by creating this thing. We'll call it SANE. Finally, Tom escapes the asylum to call Edward and go to the hospital to see Tate. What kind of confuses me is how Tom's easily lets go of his hate towards Tyler after escaping. So in my interpretation, I would have some sort of conflict between the two. They haven't quite mended with each other, but they're at the hospital to see the same person who also was a soldier and is dying of cancer or maybe just an injury from the war. Sane doesn't like Tate because, well, I can't think of a good reason off the top of my head. But what I'm trying to get across here is that this series has a lot of potential. The story is still fresh and starting, but it can be amazing. If there's going to be a villain, make sure to let the viewer understand their point of view. And if there's going to be a conflict, make it personal rather than impersonal. These are just a few tips on how to make a story more effective. But the story can be many things and it doesn't always have a clear structure for success. That was more suggestions, so now we're going to finally move on to theories. One of which Tarko keeps pointing out. Is Thomas gay? Well, I think I have the answer. When Thomas's clothes are taken, we see him wearing underwear with hearts on them. If you are vigilant, they're actually the same colour scheme as Tyler's. So does that mean Thomas is gay for Tyler? No, there's more. Tyler obviously tricked him, so that option would be out of the window. It's mentioned that Thomas loves chocolate, and what does Francis eat? A chocolate donut. So does that mean Thomas is gay for Francis? No, there's more. Francis obviously states that he wanted pink flavoured donuts. What does this have to do with anything? Well, look at Tate, he has pink on him. So does that mean Thomas is gay for Tate? I think so. But wait, I need to check something. If we change the hue, <gasps> mother of God, it can't be. Thomas is gay confirmed. <laughs> but he's not just gay, he's gay for me. White and yellow color scheme, green eye, it was right in front of my eyes. It was so obvious, how could I not know? This changes everything. But isn't the shirt not blue? I, God damn it, you ruined my perfect theory. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and please go support Taco with her series, that would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, until next time.